cover. Okay, and now I just, I just use a pliers to, these are little, what they call pal nuts. Just take and take those loose. And I don't know, they, they have this cover on there and, and it, it really serves no purpose other than a, I, I was Like an appendix in your body? Yeah, well, it, I think it was probably a safety issue. In fact, on some of the Cineramas, the early Cineramas, they had covers over everything and then they discovered that they ran too hot oh, that sure. way, so they had to take them off anyway. Yep. But I think they just want wanted it to look a little cleaner under here. I don't know if it's actually a safety reason or what, but this little cover comes right off. And there's our motor. And what uh, RPM and what... Uh... That is a 2.5 RPM, counterclockwise. And these were originally made by, was it the Hankscraft Company? Great. Hankscraft is correct, yep. So then you take these. It's really an interesting way they have these mounted in here. And it's mostly because of that cover. You have these long screws that come off. And it's a fine line between getting in Steve's business here and capturing these details for you, the uh, okay. Ham's beer lover. Okay, this little screw here Basically what this does, the only thing I could ever figure out what the purpose of that was, was to limit and hold this bracket in place. Okay, so now we got that loose and there we need to get this little bracket out of here. And are the belts available for any other commercial purpose? How do those uh, still exist in this day? Have you ever had Well, you know, and, and very seldom well, you have to replace a belt. You, uh, they, they are very you, durable. Very durable. I've never had one break. About the only time that I get a call to replace a belt is when somebody has had, had to sign a part and taken it apart in attempt to do what we're doing here, and then lost the belt, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or left it out, and then it got misplaced. So the motor is wired in two wires. As you can see, and it doesn't matter which way they go, you have the two wires coming out from underneath. This is 110 volts, obviously, so you don't want it plugged in. Oh, yeah. Is it plugged in? Don't ask no, me. It's not. It doesn't look like it's plugged in. All yeah. right. Yeah. So. so don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> and this video you. reaches its shocking conclusion. Yes, yeah. So here's your motor. Now, when, when you replace the motor, this little gear has to come off of here. Okay, and as you'll notice, and you can see what's happened is this is completely stripped inside. You shouldn't be able to turn it like this. This immediately tells you that the motor is bad. Okay, if you can see on the end, there's a tiny little clip on the end of that shaft. If you can see it there. Yep, I'm going to go way in here so you can see that. Oh, hold on, there we go. Yep, see that clip? This tiny little clip. And if you don't know what's there, you'll you got to have that off of there. You'll never ever get that gear off of there. So you just reach in there with the pliers, and, and if it goes flying, don't worry about it because you don't have to reuse it. Oh, wow! And then that gear comes right off. Okay. Now this little black thing here, this just keeps the belt from going off this way. Okay. I do make these gears. If you do, again, what happens is somebody will take this apart to fix the motor. They can't find one. And then it gets misplaced with the gear on it, and all of a sudden you, you get a sign that looks like this with nothing in there. The belt normally will be there because in order to get that belt out, you have to take this, this shaft out, yep. and there's really no reason to take that out. So most of the time you'll have the belt, but every once in a while you'll have somebody that'll take them out. But yeah, so this has to be saved. And I say, here's what your motor looks like. It's got a flat. Here's another one of those little clips here. And that basically just keeps the motor, keeps the shaft from going on too far. And while we're on the subject of motors, the best way is to drop you a check at the ham shop. And what happens is Steve will wait until he has the motor in stock, in hands, and due to supply chain issues and another, oh, also a multitude of factors, he may not have them on stock. So you mail in a check clearly stating what it's for, what sign, right? Because you yep. get checks without yep. any explanation yep. at all. And I have motors for seven different signs, so make sure you tell me which sign it's for. 
All right, and should we come back, Steve? Yep, no, we're, we're, we're good. We're, uh, I just want to show how to take the other, this little bracket. Okay, now you see this little bracket that goes through here. Now, if you want to zoom in here, you can see the little E-clips. Now, this one was laying down in here when we took the side apart. That would have been the one that went on this side, so that one's already gone. Yep. But this one is in place. So you just want to get in there with a screwdriver and pop that off like that. And again, you won't reuse these, so don't worry about them. Obviously, don't you want them out of there. You don't want them caught up in the roller, but that's what those look like. Little eclipse. And then you can take this bracket right out of there. So that's a total eclipse. Total eclipse, yep. Good God. We'll return. Okay, now normally, again, uh, <clears throat> I, this this scroll would still be in the it basically covering this, but with this roller on there, you can lift it up enough to get in here and do all this work. You just have to fight that a little bit. And but, if somebody does take that scroll off, that is just put back. Is there a special sort of tape? To I it? use I use clear packing tape for that seam. Okay. And then if the, this is ruined, I have new ones also. But And how would you apply that while it's in its... Uh, state like this and then no you have you'd have to have it in the sign because you would, once it's taped because it's got to be threaded through here under here and then around okay so you would have to put it in and then obviously you want to tape it without this roller in so you have you don't have the pressure on it okay yep okay so now normally you wouldn't have to go any farther than that you got your motor here your motor's out ready for the new motor um but being as we got to replace these ballasts we got to go one more step and that step is to take this inner housing out of the outer housing because we got we got to pull these out far enough to get at the wires. The wires are underneath here. Again, covers. Covers. All right. We'll return after we do this. Yeah. Here's a tidbit too that. There. Okay. Your lower your lower uh, cord here goes through the bottom of the sign, and you want you're going to want to take that loose. So that you, you know, because this has to come lift up. So you just take and bend these two little tabs and then reach in there with the pliers and just squeeze that and it'll, it'll come right out. And you had a previous 65 Rippler here on the uh, operating table where someone didn't realize there was a top and the bottom for yeah, it. Yeah, they actually put it in upside down. sandwich two piece but you get the idea mm -hmm. okay in order to get okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take this cover off where all the wires run for this whole mechanism in order to do that you have three screws here mm -hmm. two. Whoa. Oh, I'm sorry there's four screws there's one right here, one right underneath the motor. This is the first time I've done, ever done this. <laughs> Today. Today, yeah. Oh, could there be five? You know, something there is, another. We're going to have to take this completely apart. So, yeah, because I got... We shall return. Yeah, I... Uh, 